Because the stone you were asked to select as you came in this morning is vital to our ritual today, I would like to give anyone that didn't receive a stone a chance to receive one now. So if you don't have one, please raise your hand high. And hopefully our ushers can bring in some stones for people. So I see one, two, three, four, Lovely, we have Linda and Mari handing out some stones. So raise your hands and they'll bring the stones to you. Everyone have a stone? All right. Thank you, Linda and Mari. Reverend Leslie Takahashi writes, we return again and again to the season of forgiveness. And each time we come, we come bearing gifts, a grudge to relinquish, a hatred to extinguish, a hope that has bloated and distorted, a glancing word that has wounded. Each time we walk the road toward forgiveness, we mutter, we have been here before. When will we remember that forgiveness is not so much an act as an attitude, not so much a duty as a love we give ourselves as part of the ever unfolding new beginning? not so much an act as an attitude. Yom Kippur is the time of year Jewish people look for reconciliation between each other and with God. 10 days before Yom Kippur, it is the custom and Jewish tradition to look back over the past year and make amends to those you have offended by seeking forgiveness. Yom Kippur is itself is the day to seek forgiveness from God from, for any vows that may have been broken by admitting your wrongs and taking responsibility for them by making amends, you are brought closer to God. It's humbling to come face to face with our own imperfections, our own humanity. It is even more humbling to admit those imperfections to another and ask them to forgive us. In our story today, we have a king who learns to say he is sorry and a family who is stuck in resentment. The king realizes he has made a mistake and repairs his kingdom by acknowledging his role in the mistake he made and taking responsibility. The family is unable to see the role, their role in their predicament and continue to blame the king. This is how we hold a burden of anger, resentment, hatred, or hurt. The bitterness stays within us and festers, creating its own wound to our soul. Oftentimes, we would rather ignore and forget that there has been harm where we have been vulnerable. We would like to hold on to those grudges like prized possessions against another. It makes us feel justified. In Forgive for Good, a proven prescription for health and happiness, psychologist Fred Luskin writes, in careful scientific studies, forgiveness training has been shown to reduce depression, increase hopefulness, decrease anger, improve spiritual connection, and increase emotional confidence. Luskin continues, quote, hanging on to anger and resentment, living in a constant state of stress can damage the heart as well as the soul. In fact, research has shown that failure to forgive may be a risk factor for heart disease, high blood pressure, and a score of other chronic stress-related illnesses. Medical and psychological studies have also shown that a person holding on to anger and resentment is at an increased risk for anxiety, depression, and insomnia. 
and is more likely to suffer from high blood pressure, ulcers, migraines, backaches, heart attack, heart attack, and even cancer. The reverse is also true, Luskin continues. Genuine forgiveness can transform these ailments. In other words, we may feel justified, but we're not healthy. And I want to be clear here. When I'm talking about forgiveness, I'm talking about our own internal process with forgiveness. Our own internal hurts, our own internal things that we're holding on to. I'm not talking about reconciliation. I'm not talking about repair of relationship. Because that requires more than one person. And sometimes that reconciliation and that repair is not safe to do or can't be done. So I'm only talking about our internal process with forgiveness today. Sometimes we're meant to offer forgiveness to those who have wronged us. Sometimes we are meant to ask for forgiveness for those we have wronged. And sometimes we need to actually forgive ourselves. In the book of Forgiving, the Fourfold Path of Healing and Ourselves and Our World, which is a beautiful, beautiful book by Archbishop Desmond Tutu and his daughter Mututu, they remind us of the following, quote, when we forgive, we take back control of our own fate and our feelings. We become our own liberators. We don't forgive to help the other person. We don't forgive for others. We forgive for ourselves. Forgiveness, in, our, in other words, is the best form of self-interest. This is true both spiritually and scientifically. The reasons for forgiving ourselves are the same as forgiving others. It is how we become free of the past. It is how we heal and grow. It is how we make meaning out of our suffering, restore our self-esteem, and tell a new story of who we are. If forgiving our others leads to an external peace, forgiving ourselves leads to an internal peace." End quote. So if you're not holding your stone, I invite you to hold it in your hands. You might be drawn to those smooth edges, and you can spend a little time there, but also notice those places that might be a little more jagged, a little more sharp. Fill the pits and the cracks that may be easy to miss with the naked eye, but you might be able to feel with your hand. Feel its weight in your hand. Thich Nhat Hanh invites us to imagine a pebble thrown into a river. As it sinks through the water effortlessly, detached from everything, it finally reaches the bottom, the point of perfect rest. We must be that people letting go of our anger so that we can find and land at perfect rest. As you feel your stone, Find those places of rest. And as you encounter them, reflect on where you are holding on to anger, resentment, hatred, fear, bitterness. Let them find a place of rest in your stone. Reflect on people in your life you have harmed, or you, they who have harmed you, knowing there's still a decision on whether to be in relationship or even reconciliation. I invite you to let the emotions you are holding on to about the harm to find a resting place in that stone.
Think of those times when you have been angry with yourself and held on to shame or bitterness for what you should have done, could have done, might have done. And listen to your own heart and find the places you can let go of them and let them rest in that stone. Let each of these places where forgiveness is possible find a resting place in the stone in your hand. Let them go from your heart, from your soul, and your spirit to reside in a piece of the earth. Feel the weight of them in the weight of the stone and no longer on your person. And as this weight settles into the stone, let your heart break wide open to receiving the healing that comes with forgiveness. This bowl symbolizes our sacred space, a space we can share one of the true human conditions, the need to forgive and be forgiven. I will pour some of our water that we collected from our water communion ceremony at the beginning of this year. to symbolize the love of this church which flows between our actions and holds us even in the most tender of moments. As you feel moved to do so, and when you are ready to let go, I invite you forward to place your stone in the bowl. And as you feel your burden lifted, I invite you to say, I begin again in love. If you are not ready to let go of your stone, or if you are at home watching online, then listen to your heart to know when it is time to find that perfect place of rest for that stone. If you need someone to gather your stone for you, then Carmen will come around and collect those. Just raise your hand and let her know. You may bring your stones forward and place them in the bowl and say, I begin again in love.
Rebecca Parker reminds us, even when our hearts are broken by our own failure or the failure of others cutting into our lives, even when we have done all we can and life is still broken, there is a universal love that has never broken faith with us and never will. After the service today, I will place the stones in our outside garden where they will find their perfect place of rest in the care of our community. I invite you into a closing prayer. Spirit of love, this morning we pray for forgiveness, that we may learn to forgive others and accept their forgiveness of us. We pray for forgiveness for our own actions. Help us let it go of fear so we can move on, opening our hearts to one another. We pray for empowerment that we may learn to love more fully. We give thanks for the blessings of love in our lives and for the chance we have to love again and begin again. May we feel the love inside us connecting with the love in each other. Amen.